Hello there people, my name is Maris. I'm a film photography enthusiast from Estonia. That's why I have the accent. And uh, today I'm going to talk about 620 film. Why would you want to use 620 film and how to use it? Over here we have two spools that are normal 120 spools. This one has a backing paper around it. There is no actual film in it, just the backing paper. And these three are 620 spools. Now I have the original 620 spools. These are made of metal. One of them, this one actually says Kodak film. The other two don't say anything. Uh, you can get these uh, from eBay. You know, people sell them just like this, they usually actually ask quite a lot of money from them. I mean, not a lot, but more than seems reasonable. Uh, I didn't buy them separately. I have three 620 cameras and all of them had a spool inside, so I have three spools. But uh, the wonderful folks of filmphotographyproject.com, they actually sell brand new 620 spools made from plastic. Uh, and what I've heard is that they are really good, you know, it doesn't matter that they're made of plastic, they are really high quality, there are no light leaks, no issues, you know, you can buy them, they are cheaper than buying the metal ones from eBay, usually. So why, why use 620 uh, cameras, you know, why, why bother? Why not just stick to 120 cameras? Well, the reasons are, you know, many. You might already have a 620 camera. You know, you, you might have found one in your grandparents' attic, like a family heirloom or something like that. And uh, instead of just using it as a some kind of decorative piece on top of the cupboard, you know, in, in, on, on a bookshelf, uh, you can actually use it. And another reason is that uh, the 620 cameras are quite a bit cheaper than uh, 120 cameras from the same era and with similar specifications. Like this one for example, it's a camera with a tessar lens, it's about as good as cameras got back then in the 1930s, it has a couple range finder, all that. But it was a lot a lot cheaper than usually uh, 120 cameras are from the same era you know similarly the uh, spec 120 cameras so that seems a very very good reason to me uh, now what what's the big difference let's talk a little bit first about the background of the of 620 film why it came around in the first place. In 1901 Kodak introduced 120 film, this spool. First these spools were made from wood. I actually have an old one, let me grab one. Here, this is an old spool from the you know, beginning of the 20th century. Since they first made them from wood, I guess that's the reason why the, the stem of the spool is so so thick. But this became, you know, the standard format. Now what happened is that, uh, of course, other camera and film manufacturers they started to produce this format as well. You know, cameras that take 120 film and 120 film. So by the 1930s, Kodak thought that it would be a good marketing strategy to introduce a completely new format, well, completely new a format that was sufficiently different, but you know, still actually it's very similar, I guess for production reasons, they didn't change too much. So what they did in 1932, they stopped producing 120 film cameras and they introduced 620. Uh, why it's called 620? 
the six apparently meant that uh, you were able to take six pictures on a single roll of film, six frames, uh, six by nine uh, centimeter frames. Uh, by the time the film actually hit the market, uh, it was longer. You, you, it, it had the same length as the regular 120 film. So you can take eight uh, six by nine images, or you know, twelve six by six, what is more common format. Uh, now Kodak, of course, being the, the giant of uh, photography industry. Uh, they they hoped that 620 film would be, you know, it would push the 120 film out of the market completely. Uh, you know, they themselves stopped producing 120 cameras, but that's not how it went. So, I believe the last camera, last new camera introduced that used 620 film was Kodak Brownie Reflex, that was introduced in 1959. So it's already quite incredible that this film stayed in production up till 1995. Anyway, so what's the difference? Basically, the only difference is the size of the spool. The stem of the spool is much thinner, as you can see. But also these discs are uh, smaller in di diameter. You know, if you look like this, you can see it's, I guess, about a millimeter thinner. Well, maybe more, two millimeters. Uh, the film itself is exactly the same. And even the packing paper is exactly the same, meaning that uh, the, the, the film, uh, the frame numbers on the backing paper are at the same place. So all you have to do, basically, is get this film onto this spool and you're good to go. Now, some 620 box cameras, very the very simple ones. You might be able to jam uh, 620 or I mean the 120 cartridge in there. Uh, you know, a box camera, this film compartment might be big enough, but usually that's not the case. Like this one, for example, it is a very simple one. Uh, the delivery side, you can actually get this spool in there. But because this, uh, the stem actually of a 620 uh, camera, the stem that goes in here is much thinner. So it will like move around here, it will go to these ends of the, you know, it, it will jam, basically it will jam. You know, you will, you will not be able to advance the film, so you know, don't, don't do it. Uh, oh, there were actually some cameras on the market that were able to use both formats. There was, for example, Argus Argoflex. It was a twin lens reflex camera. And how they did it was that the stem that goes in here was stepped. So f first it had like a smaller part that uh, you know, fits the 620 spool and then the it had a, a fatter part that, that fits the 120 spool. But most, most 620 cameras could take only 620 film. So, today, if you want to use a 620 camera, what you have to do is re-spool the film. Now, what I'm about to show you now must take place in total darkness. You know, you can't re-spool the film in, in, in daylight. Basically, you know, you can use a dark bag. I personally have never used a dark bag. It seems quite, you know, unhandy. You know, you put your hands into some kind of bag. It's, you know, I imagine your hands get all sweaty and, you know, it's much easier to just use a room that you can make completely dark, like a toilet or a bathroom, I don't know, some cupboard. And it must be completely dark, you know, even if some light is seeping in underneath the door, you know, it might, it might uh, uh, fog, fog the film, so just make it completely dark, you know, push some towel in front of the, you know, some seams that where light, light seams, seeps in, or something like that. So, let's say we are now in a completely dark room, what we do, 
we take a 120 film. Now we can't just re-roll it to a 620 spool and and that's it because it will be it will be backwards and uh, as you might know uh, the film is taped to the backing paper at the beginning you know well the where the film starts the back end is loose the the, the, the end of the film is loose so you have to first re-spool it to one spool and then re-spool it re-spool it uh, again and the first re-spooling can be done you know on a normal six or I mean the normal 120 spool it doesn't matter the important part is that the final re-spooling is done with the proper 620 spool so basically what you do let's say uh, that this would be like a, a real film this is just the backing paper Basically, you start with spooling like this. Make sure it's it's it goes straight. Just roll, roll, roll in complete darkness. You know. It's not difficult actually. Once you've done it a few times, it goes really, really easily. Un unless you're like a really clumsy person, but you know, hopefully you're not. So just roll, 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 you roll like that. Just make sure, you know, at one point uh, the fill will start, it will be taped to the backing paper. When you feel it, you, you can feel it even like this, you can keep your, your thumb in here, you know. With this first re-rolling, it's not that important. Just make, make sure that will, it will be like no kink in here. So just keep on rolling, keep on rolling, keep on going. Keep on going, keep on going. Make sure it's nice and tight. So keep on going, keep on going, keep on going, keep on going. Still we are in complete darkness. And voila, we're done. Now this is the back end. Now we take a real 620 spool. And we start rolling the film or the backing paper and the film on it basically backwards so let me get this in there properly and this is a bit like broken packing paper yeah, 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 yeah. get in there awesome yeah like this yes now no now it's important that when the film starts that uh, it will actually go underneath the spool that it will not like come out like this in, you know I mean you are in, in complete darkness so keep your thumb in here and you can feel you can feel when the film starts and when it starts just push it underneath underneath the spool it's easy it's not difficult and just make sure there will be no kink in it and then you just keep on going, keep on going, keep on going, like this, like this, like this, like this. No. Complete darkness still. Keep going, keep going, keep going. And, and we're done and we have a fresh brand new 620 film now if you want to store it you know put a rubber band around it we'll keep it nice and tight and you know, don't, don't put it in in like really bright light you might get some light seeping in from here just you know keep it in you know in relative darkness dim light Now I will show you how to actually load this fresh 620 film into a camera. Let's take this one. This is a box camera. It's actually a very nice box camera. It's probably as as high-end as the box cameras ever went, more or less. 
but another time I will make a, I will make a separate video about this camera, also about this one, that one, and also also show you some images that I've taken with these cameras. But now I'll show you how to load, how to load your fresh one uh, a 620 film into a camera. Well, actually, you know the process is pretty much the same as with. Uh, with with uh, one 120 camera so let's insert the take up spool just insert it in here so it's in now the delivery side a roll of film Put it in here, it's in, put it over, like this, zip, push it into the, push it into the slit, and that's about it. Here the arrow, the arrow is, I guess you're supposed to roll it, turn it until the arrow reaches this point. Now we can close the camera. And now keep on turning until we see, oh here is the arrow, until we see uh, number one in the window. Just turn, turn. So exactly as a normal 120 camera basically, an old 120 camera of course, not like a, not like a Hasselblad or something like that. And we have number one, that's it, we're done, we're ready to shoot. So if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below and see you next time, bye bye.